Okay, welcome back to a little fly tying. Today we're going to be tying a cicada fly. A lot of talk on the internet as of late about a big 17 year hatch coming up. Well, in my area, that 17 year hatch was just a couple years ago. Different regions have different hatches. And so in western Pennsylvania, I wouldn't expect to see a bunch of cicadas this summer and spring. Spring and summer. But uh, last few years ago, a couple years ago, we had our big hatch. And this is something I used, and it worked very, very well on the cicadas. We were actually on the bass looking for the cicadas. I use this fly as a hopper dropper a lot when I'm out trout fishing. It can hold a couple of decent sized nymphs below it and still not affect it. And I've caught a lot of fish on it. They somehow, uh, some reason, they like the profile of this fly. So let's get started with it. Thread I'm using is a Danville 210. The hook I have in the vise is a Eagle Claw Aberdeen light wire panfish. The reason I'm using this hook is actually it was the right profile when I was tying this fly a few years ago. It was right, the right profile that I was looking for. Right size and it works out well. So go ahead and start your thread on. Behind the eye there, a couple eyelets, and bring it on back. And cut away your uh, your excess here. Wrap all the way back to the top of the bend of the hook. And here we are going to add a rear set of legs. What we're going to use is just this crazy legs from hairline. It's a brown orange flake is what they call it. One of these strands is enough to do one fly. What I do, I cut it in thirds. So take a section of your crazy legs. Measure out the length that you need. Wrap it in. Pull it back over top here. Go ahead and wrap it back all the way to the top of the bend of the hook here. Make sure they're about that even in length, which they are very close. Let's give this one just a little trim. About like that. Now we're going to add a little dubbing. Dubbing I'm using is this Royal Sissy Super Fine. It's a uh, ultra violet dubbing. A little sparkly. I like to have something sparkly in the main body area. This is not so easy to dub, but all you need is just a little bit on your thread. To help you out, you can actually put on a little bit of dubbing wax. This is Waspy dubbing wax. Just lay it basically on your thread like that. And spin it right around it. You want this actually a pretty tight dubbing noodle. Reason being is you're going to add a little super glue to it. Start backwards, all the way back to the base of the tail there, and bring it back up frontward. See some bra black thread on it? Uh, don't worry about it. Ain't going to hurt nothing. Do the same thing again. Just lay it right on top of the thread. Dub it on. When you're dubbing, just go one direction only. Bring it back up front. You're going to go about three quarters of the length 
of the hook shank. I'll go just a little bit more than that. Probably ain't gonna need it, but I think a little more won't hurt. Just about like that, and you can bring it back a little bit if you want. Just get that back on there. This area is going to get covered up right here. So wrap it in. See how that looks. Don't worry about that black thread. It's going to be all pretty much covered up anyway. You're just going to see a little bit of green flash on the bottom of the fly. Okay. To this point, You're going to add your first layer of do hair everywhere of foam, craft store foam. This is three millimeter, a little thicker than the two millimeter stuff. You can use two millimeter, millimeter but I uh, I like this three. I got it at a craft store. Should have bought more craft stores went out of business, and I bought a bunch. Made by Darcy, three millimeter. Here's the size of the sheet there. It's an 11 by 17 or so, give or take. This sheet is enough to do dozens of flies. And what I do is I cut them into half inch strips. And this is after I've been working on a few flies here. You gotta put about you know that many and that long. So one of these strips will do about three flies. So you have a few dozen flies out of one one piece of foam. So we're going to start with on the hook shank. Going to wrap up the thread a little bit, a couple of times, and we're going to add a little bit of super glue. Don't get too crazy here. You're going to get sticky fingers if you do. You just want to have a little bit right on top of the dubbing. Right on top of your thread. Just a little dab to secure everything. That Aberdeen hook is a size 4. I don't know if I told you that or not. On the end of your foam strip, just go ahead and cut it down to about, not a point, but like that. Lay your first bringer thread back up to about one eye length behind. Lay your foam strip right on top and bend it down, pinch it down over, you're going to tie it in. This is your first series of ties right here. A couple good solid wraps. And you're going to bring it back. You're going to eyeball it to about here. In which I tied in about half the shank, maybe a little less than half the shank, about uh, about one third of the shank of the hook. Grasping the foam again. Normally I won't let wouldn't let go of the foam at this point, but I wanted to show you. Grasp the foam again and wrap it back up forward here. You want to build in this little section here. Build it up a little bit, fill it in. Looking at the cicada head, it is black when it's a full grown adult. It's brown at first, then it looks like it turns black. When we had our big hatch in the past, I 
Stangered them pretty good, looked at them, and come up with this. All right, now you got uh, all wrapped in, looking pretty good. Take your foam and cut it right at where the tail, or not the tail, where the rear legs start there. Straight across, just like that. So now that's your first section. You don't matter that much, it just bother me a little bit. Alright, first section of, of foam. Now we're going to do another section, and then we're going to repeat a little bit of super glue again. The super glue is all going to it's going to secure it once it all settles in. Just a little dab again right on top of your thread. Not very much. It's right on the base of your foam. Don't put it up here because I want that to be separate from your bottom or your top piece of foam. So, bring your thread to the middle of your thread wrap there. You want to pull forward about one half of a shank of the hook because you're going to bend it back like this. So, right about here, give it a pinch, give it a good tight wrap. Thread I got is at uh, 210 denier Danville, so it uh, it's a good good thread to yank on here, pretty tight. I was using a little lighter denier in the past and was breaking it. This 210 works out pretty well. How's that look? It looks pretty good. All right, let's give this a couple of wraps backwards, just to make this section just a little bit fatter right here. Alright, now you're going to take some elk hair, put it in the stacker, I'll show you the patch here, it's pretty long, uh, elk hair is a little longer than deer hair, it's a little coarser, I like it for this project because it plays out really really nice, and I want these wings to be just hanging over the side, let me see if I can, you know, of the fly here that looks like it's a big bug in distress. As I told you I fish this as a regular hopper a lot. Probably my main hopper. Alright, now I'll take my deer here. Make sure she's all stacked up. Got a couple broken ends in here. Let's get rid of those right away. That looks pretty good. Pull right straight out. Make sure you get all. There's a rogue hair in there. I don't know if you can see that guy or not. I'm going to pull him out. Now, grasping the tips, you want to measure out from where the bottom piece of foam is just past it. So grasp the tips. You're going to cut just in front of where the black thread is to secure it in. So over top the garbage can Trim all that up. Make sure it's all cleaned out. Make sure you end up with something like this here. Just a little little chunk left over. Lay it right on top of where you're... Oh, got a piece of 
where that piece of hair come from lay it right on top like that pull it back you're gonna lose a couple but that's okay wrap it in real good at this point you can let go check it out make sure that's where you want it it sure is we'll cut those away in a second but grasp it again and now what you're going to do is you're going to crank down pretty good and you're going to wrap up in through the butt end sections like that once you're satisfied you got a nice secure wrap take your fine point scissors and cut away your butt end sections here as closely as you can it's where it gets a little messy not the biggest fan of working with deer hair like this but I do because it's necessary like I said I love fishing this fly as a hopper but it's cicada time Everybody's tying one on the internet, aren't they? I wanted to show you one I tied up a couple years ago that you can use today. Pretty simple to do. You know, most of my flies aren't all that difficult. Get in some difficult ones, but uh, for the most part, these are pretty easy. Okay, once you have it all cleaned up, but I should have done two. Go ahead, uh, this big old excess here, behind the lower one, about oh, about a third of an inch. Cut it away. Now you're going to take that top piece, bend it back over, make a little elk care sandwich. Take your thread and right in behind the front there, give it a couple good wraps. Just like that. Crank it on down. There we go. How's everything looking here? Looking really good just how she wants it. Alright, now we're going to add in the front legs. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to cut away. I'm going to show you how this top's going to be because it really doesn't matter at the order you do this. Pull that up a little bit. Trim off corner on both ends got a little point and you're going to trim off the top this the longer one don't cut any deer hair off just cut off the tips just kind of want to round it off a little bit out like that. So when it sits in the water there you got a little bit of a profile. On the bottom just cut the corners off too. Just the very edges, uh, edges of them. Like that. Here's a profile. All the way around. Just a couple straggly deer hairs here. Like that. One more. Like that. Here we go. I want it to lay 
where the deer hair is laying on the water looking like a wing or looking like a bug with the wing spread out in distress. Alright, so now we're going to add a couple legs in. Then you cut them in thirds, your other two remaining pieces are very close to the same length. So you shouldn't have to trim them up. Add right alongside the body there. Give it a wrap. Just for length. Should be about even. Give it one more there. The cicada head is black. That's why I'm using black thread as an adult cicada. I noticed when they, when I was studying them earlier, a couple years back, a few years back, they were primarily brown when they first hatched and then they as an adult have a black head so with everything in there give it a couple good wraps take your quick finish tool this is my larger one here give it a couple good whips Try not to trap the legs. Pull it nice and tight. Cut it away. Oops. See how everything looks here. Alright, so now what we're going to do. One straggler. Nope. Oh. Make sure there's no extra deer hair on it. See how the wings kind of display out like that? So when it's on the water, these touch the water and it looks like it's a bug in distress. I'm going to add some Sally Hansen's. I'm going to cover up all this thread. And once the Sally Hansen's cures your foam doesn't move around anymore. It stays real secure on the hook. Tell me where you see the black thread. What I uh, use a lot too is a copper thread, copper color thread. Let me show you here. This is my pretty much my summer looking hopper. But for a cicada, since they got a blackhead. Got black thread. All right, now you're gonna take a little bit of the super glue and right there's a V right there at the bottom. I like to add a little dab of super glue right in there, and this kind of gets all sections at once. I'll show you here. This fly basically is the same thing, except for I put a little uh, pink on the bottom. But you can crank on this body, and it won't move. Okay, there you go. You have a cicada fly that I put together a few years back a couple years back for my uh, local cicada hatch and it worked out well mostly for bass is what I was using it for but it, like I told you this is my primary hopper dropper 
Cub holds a couple good size droppers. Doesn't go under. It's a great indicator. And fish love it too. And I hope you like it too. Alright, if you uh, like this fly, give me a like, subscribe, all the other good stuff. And tie one up. Take a fishing. Get ready for your local cicada hatch. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you next time.